Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Recently I was asked if I would share how to make a quilt block called Dizzy Geese. So I actually found a pattern in a book that I own. I'll leave the link below. The lady who invented this block is named Joan Streck. There's a picture of her quilt and there's also pattern pieces. So I worked on this quilt block. I did not use Joan's pattern. My block is slightly different. I wanted to share how to make it on my channel here without using patterns that you would need to purchase. So there, my version uses squares and my geese over here don't quite match up the same way that hers did, but I still think it's a really pretty block and I'm gonna show you how I did it. Let's get started. We're going to do this quilt block in sections and I'm going to start in the middle with a square and a square. The pink square is three and a half inches and I have two background squares, white, that are also three and a half inches. Cutting the two background pieces in half diagonally, I'm going to add them to all four sides of my pink square. After pressing and trimming the little background pieces from those triangles, I'm going to cut this or trim this square into a five inch square and two and a half inches is halfway. So I'm trying to line up the two and a half inch mark on the points of that center pink square. next element of this quilt block that I'm going to work on are the star points. And I am starting with four pieces of fabric and they are not square. They're four inches by five inches and I need four of these. And then on the back side, I found I'm going to mark a quarter inch up from the middle of the center. To find the center, I just folded these rectangles in half and then I'm going to draw the star points on the back side and do sort of a little um, foundation piecing using some triangles and the lines, these lines will help me sew my star points on. I cut my star points, which are sort of a soft yellow tan color. I cut these three and a half inches by five inches. And then with two together, I cut a diagonal line one way, and then I put the other two together and I cut a diagonal line the opposite way. And this will give me eight star points, four for uh, the left side and four for the right side. After figuring out which side I'm working on, just laying it on the front to know I'm going the right direction, I put right sides together and I lined up the edge of that star point with the line, the pencil line on the back and sort of moved it over about a quarter of an inch, but I didn't need to be exact 
because what I'm going to be doing next is I will be trimming using the um, rectangle as my guide and then cutting away the back. Now here I realized, oh yeah, I want to, <laughs> don't race ahead. So I started cutting there and like I said, my brain wasn't quite working yet. Um, first, I need to use the back, that rectangle piece on the back as my guide to trim away the excess from the star point. And then I can cut the, um, the excess behind the star point before I add the second star point. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, you can have a double layer there, but I would prefer just having one layer of fabric. You can see again, I just, I can see where the edge of the fabric is and I can see where my pencil line is. So I just want to lay it so that I have a seam. And again, I'll just finger press that open and I will trim using the background fabric as my guide and then I'll trim away the back of that star point. Now I have two of the elements of this really pretty quilt block ready. And I'm just gonna lay it out and show you how far we've gotten. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the flying geese. I have this ruler that is still available on Amazon. I checked it, mine is pretty old. And I'm using the uh, one and a half by three inch size. And to make four flying geese at a time, I need two squares of fabric. The background fabric is six inches by six inches. And the colored fabric in front, which will be my flying geese, are four and a half by four and a half inches. So I put right sides together and I centered those two squares as best I could and then I drew a line through the center and then I'll be sewing on both sides of my pencil line. After cutting and pressing these two sort of funny looking half square triangles, I'm going to put right sides together with the uh, fabrics going opposite directions and you can see the seams do not match up and that's what we want. Now I'm going to draw another pencil line down the center and again I'm going to be sewing on either side of that pencil line. After pressing my funny looking little pieces here, I'm going to use my ruler and I will trim my flying geese using this little ruler that will give me a flying geese unit. Again, I want to mention that my flying geese ruler is for is made for a one and a half by three inch finished geese. So that is the finished size. But if you were to make flying geese another way, 
uh, you would need a an unfinished flying geese. These little pieces right here are not finished. In other words, they're not sewn into the quilt. So at this point, they measure two inches by three and a half inches, and that's the size that you need that would match up with the, um, the quilt block that I'm making right now. For our Dizzy Geese quilt block today, I need 24 of these flying geese units. So I had to make six. I needed six background squares and six of those blue squares to make four flying geese from each of those pairs of squares. And I'm going to have all the cutting directions down below, but for this block, I just thought it would be easier to do it section by section and let you know what you would need for each of the elements of this quilt block. When all of my flying geese were made, I sat down and I sewed them together in groups of three. Once I had all of my flying geese made, my groups of three, I laid them around the star, all sort of pointing the same direction. Here I have two five inch squares and I'm using these triangles, I've cut them in half. I have four triangles. I'm going to put this in the center part of those corner blocks. I want a smaller triangle in the center area and in the outside I'll be cutting a larger square in half, a six inch square in half, so that those flying geese are closer to the inside of this star. So here are my six inch squares. I'm going to cut those in half and I'm gonna lay those on the outside of those flying geese. And that's the trick with this little quilt block is those triangles, the inside triangle is smaller than the outside triangle, and that just moves those flying geese a little more to the center. I'll sew both triangles onto my flying geese unit and I left it all out here so I could see what I was doing. That really helped, helped a lot. And I'm just centering those triangles, putting them on, and then I only have a one more little set of triangles to add all the way around. A 
Again, here are it's my last set of triangles to add. These, again, are five inches, and I'm going to lay these on either side. And then after I've added all four triangles around the flying geese, I'm going to be trimming this outside square with the flying geese, and it should measure seven inches by seven inches. Okay, now that I have all of my units ready to go, I just need to sew all the pieces together. I need to make sure all my flying geese are going in the same direction. And before you know it, we're going to have a quilt block. the beautiful quilt block called Dizzy Geese. Thank you, Roseanne, for asking. 
how to make it. I'm not even sure I should call it Dizzy Geese because it isn't quite exactly like its original maker uh, planned, but I really like the way it turned out and I enjoyed figuring it out. That's always fun to get my brain cells going. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.